This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by Domain.com. Oh my goodness, wailing in the office, anguish people writing in, Anthony Carboni, I gotta say, was rending his clothes. Veronica threw a Twitter spaz all over the impending demise of Google Reader. Ladies and gentlemen, panic not, our friends at Lifehacker are on it. Joining us today, newly minted editor-in-chief, Whitson Gordon. Whitson, are you with us, sir? I am. Outstanding. I, I gotta ask, are, are, you a, are you one of the people who just went into complete panic mode when the, you know, it's in July, we're taking down Google Reader, it's been nice, Bye bye says Google. I mean, did you panic when, when you saw that? It wasn't so much panic as it was just a state of shock, complete <laughs> and utter disbelief. I, I, I was just so surprised that they're pulling down Google Reader. You know, you know be, being in the line of work that I am, everyone I know uses Google Reader. Everyone I know lives and dies by Google Reader. Um, maybe the general population is not so integrated. So maybe, you know, it was just kind of weird for me to be like, oh crap, this tool that I use so heavily on a daily basis is going away. It was interesting to read, like, uh, Will over at Tested.com was like, eh, I gave up on Google Reader forever ago. I just subscribe to my favorite people who post interesting things on Twitter. Uh, you know, a lot of people posted how it was purely a business decision for Google and that this project doesn't really meet their long-term needs, which is basically, I guess, being inside of every transaction you make on the Internet by a Google <laughs> Plus after everything gets integrated into Google Plus. I mean, what, I mean, dude, you're life hacker. What is your plan? What are you? What What are your your primary options for replacing Google Reader? So there there are a number of other RSS readers out there, um, and we actually just did a poll to see what our readers are currently using that isn't Google Reader, <laughs> and Feedly won the poll by an overwhelming majority. Really? Feedly is uh, it's a cloud based RSS reader. It's it currently syncs with Google Reader, but they've already announced that they're going to have a different syncing mechanism in place by the time Google Reader shuts down. It's uh, it's more of a browser extension than it is just a website, mm -hmm. but it's available for you know Chrome, Safari, Firefox, iOS, Android, um, and it's really nice. It's got a very Google Reader-like interface, but it also has kind of a more newspaper, like you know, modern, casual reading interface, which is really nice. Um, and there are some other options. There's one called the Old Reader that looks and kind of it was designed to be more like the old Google Reader before the redesign. Mm -hmm. So that's a really great one too. Is that the oldreader.com? I believe so. I'm sitting in here. Okay. The, yes, the oldreader.com. The ultimate social RSS reader. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I'm not sure really what I'm going to start using yet, but I'm on the lookout. You're on the lookout. Any other strong contenders, or is it pretty much if, if you prefer Google Reader style and layout, take a look at Feedly, take a look at the old reader? Those are the two biggest, I would say. Mm -hmm. There's another one called News Blur that I'm kind of digging on. Um, it, it's only free for up to, I think, 64 feeds or something like that. Otherwise, you have to, to pay a small premium. And right now, they're not accepting free accounts because, of course, all of these sites are just hammered with traffic right now because everyone is in panic mode, even though Google Reader isn't shutting down until July. We've got lots of time to worry about. You know, the scene is going to change so much between now and July mm -hmm. that looking for an alternative right this second isn't necessarily the, the best use of one's time, I'd argue. Uh, you know, you, you can kind of check them out, but, you know, all of the sites are hammered and things are going to change. We don't know what all these apps are going to start syncing with come July. You know, because Google feed Reader is going away too, right? Right, feed burners going away. Um, it, well, feed and feed burners sold to Google Reader a while ago, or, right. or started syncing with Google Reader a while ago. And yeah, all the desktop apps like Feed Burner, uh, Reader for Mac and iOS, those all sync with Google Reader. That's going to change. We don't really know what they're going to sync with though, and what you use is going to depend probably on what other apps you use and what they sync with. So do you recommend that people do you recommend people export all of their Google Reader feeds today or or can they wait until later on in June? <laughs> I'd wait. You're going to be able to to export those feeds, you know, later on in June. It's a very easy process. It's, you know, literally two clicks. It downloads a zip file to your computer and then you can upload the what's called an OPML file that stores all of your RSS feeds in it. You can up, import that to any feed reader on the planet basically. So we'll actually, we'll put a link in the show notes to the instructions how to export your feeds out of Google Reader. Lifehacker's got the word on that along with some of their favorite choices, some of the options along with uh, News Blur. News Blur looks interesting. I keep like, there's shiny over here and I keep turning to it. <laughs> I, I gotta ask, it's really nice. you guys are constantly posting. What's coming up on Lifehacker this week? 
Oh man, we got some fun. We got some fun stuff in the past two weeks. God, what's coming out this week? We've got. <laughs> I've I've got a guide coming up on how to just customize the heck out of your iPhone home screen, which is pretty cool. Nice. You know, we feature a lot of custom reader home screens, but no one ever posts anything for the iPhone. Um, we did a a lot of stuff last week. We did a big one on uh, Evernote and and why Evernote's actually awesome. And a lot of people kind of haven't been able to get into it, but. Um, you know, have heard about it a lot, and so I kind of did a did a piece on why Evernote's actually so great, why people like it so much. Is uh, Evernote one of your primary tools? It is now. <laughs> I was one of those people that couldn't figure it out for the longest time, and I kept hearing people talk about it. And, oh my gosh, I would die without Evernote, and I was like, really? It just seems like a I can just use text files for all that. <laughs> but once I finally figured out what everyone liked about it, it made a lot more sense. Ladies and gentlemen, lifehacker.com is an amazing website that makes a sense out of a lot of things, not just cell phones and Google Reader. It is good stuff. Thank you, Wits and Gordon, so much for your time today. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. When we come back, we're going to talk about, well, the, the Linux world is angry with our Linux Steam Box fail, but we got our 3D drivers running in Linux, and we'll tell you how right after this break. Need a new domain name? Consider registering a new .com. We all know that the .com domain name is the original and the best. It's globally understood and it gives your website immediate credibility no matter what name you choose. And the best place to find a new .com domain is at domain.com. Here at Techzilla, we like domain.com because they're affordable, reliable, and easy to use. Plus, domain.com's active social media presence on Twitter, at domain.com, and great customer support make it a fun place to do business. Not enough for you? What about an awesome coupon code worth a big 20% off discount off of Domain.com's already low prices? All you need to do is use the coupon code TECHZILLA when you check out at Domain.com. That's 20% off, people. Big time savings. And don't forget to give the TECHZILLA coupon code some love. And when you think domain names, think Domain.com. And that's a .com. 